Greetings on this Friday in the third week of Easter, May the 1st, 2020. Good to be with you again for our daily devotion. Typically on Fridays, the men of the congregation or a faithful uh, cadre of men will gather together for a Bible study at 6.30 in the morning. Great time of fellowship as well as the study of God's Word. It is our Red Eye Men's Bible Study uh, at 6.30 in the morning. Uh, but I'm praying that once restrictions are lifted, not only will that faithful group of men still be gathering together, but also some other men might be willing to join us as well. Of late, we've been really working through the prophets and especially the minor prophets. Uh, with those minor prophets, we call them minor prophets not because what they say is minor, but rather because of the size uh, of their writing. There are 12 minor prophets, and uh, in the ancient world, when uh, these things would be written on a scroll, as they would often have them on a scroll of vellum, uh, quite often, uh, that uh, the scroll containing the 12 minor prophets was roughly the same size as the scroll that held the prophet Isaiah. Now that just gives you a little bit of comparison about uh, the content, the amount that is there, but that we shouldn't contrast them as if they are somehow less as far as their significance, because they're still delivering the word of the Lord to us. And the shortest of all those minor prophets happens to be Obadiah. Obadiah is only one chapter long, and so you don't even get Obadiah chapter whatever, verse whatever, you just get verses. So Obadiah, uh, you may be able to best remember him because of his name. His name basically means servant of Yahweh, a servant of the Lord, and he is a faithful servant who delivers God's word to us. Now, there's often with the minor prophets, they have uh, some heavy-duty words of law calling God's people to repentance. Also, they have great words of promise about how the Lord is faithful to his people, how he does deliver them in their time of need. That's good news for us because we uh, constantly pray for the Lord to deliver us as well. Even though the troubles set upon us are rather insignificant compared to many of the things that God's people have faced in the years past, but nevertheless... We still have our troubles upon us, and most especially how uh, Satan himself loves to attack the church, try to divide us one, one against another, undermine faith and such. And the Lord is faithful. But uh, it's interesting how Obadiah concludes. The very last statement in Obadiah's prophetic work is, The kingdom shall be the Lord's. And notice their Lord is in all caps. So it's the kingdom shall belong to Yahweh. All right. Now this is wonderful news because we are accustomed to how the way kingdoms go here on earth. And especially think of it this way. The Hebrew word for kingdom here is a dynamic term. It, it really describes what a king does. It's his activity of ruling and reigning. So, the rule and reign shall belong to Yahweh. What good news that is, because what happens to all the kingdoms of men? You can think of two things. Number one, that the rule and reign of man is typically, uh, ends up being tyrannical. The more power uh, somebody receives, the more that power goes to their head, and they use it to gratiate their own desires, meet their own ends, rather than serve others. Well, this is the upside-down approach because the right-side-up approach is what the Lord does. The kingdom, his rule and reign, is all about him serving us. You might think especially here about what Christ himself says. He tells his disciples that uh, you know how the Gentiles are, how they will lord it over those who are under their authority, but it shall not be so among you. Instead, whoever will be great among you must be a servant. And in fact, look at me, Jesus says, I came, and here he is, he is the Lord himself in human flesh, Yahweh present among us. And he says, I did not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Now, noting, noting that the Lord's authority, his rule and reign is all about him serving us, points out a couple things. One, you see him most kingly on the cross. But secondly, even though he no longer suffers, he had that once for all sacrifice, he continues to serve us as our king. This is why we even refer to when we gather together on Sunday morning or other times as well, we uh, classically refer to that as the divine service because it is the divine, it is God who serves us with exactly what we need. 
So one thing about the Lord's kingdom is that it's about him serving us. The second one would be this. Every earthly kingdom, the kingdoms of man, come and go. Everyone, every kingdom that has risen has ended up falling, and the ones that currently stand will one day fall. But the Lord's kingdom stands forever. His service to us, providing us with what we need, is not only present in this life, but also takes us into eternity. And what blessed news that is. That's why Jesus even teaches us to pray, Thy kingdom come. Now certainly the Lord reigns, he is king, whether we ask for it or not, whether we want it or not. But we pray, thy kingdom come, because we want that kingdom, his rule and reign, to be manifest in our own lives, that we might live in, uh, in the bliss and joy of dwelling in his kingdom. It's also why we conclude the Lord's Prayer with, for thine is the kingdom. Now, you may be aware that that phrase, the conclusion of the Lord's Prayer, is not actually found in the text of uh, the New Testament where Christ delivers to us the Lord's Prayer, such as in Matthew chapter 6. It's actually lifted, if you will, out of First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11, where you have uh, David himself praying. So uh, it's still a fine prayer coming from uh, the mouth of the faithful. Uh, but notice what we're praying there. For thine is the kingdom. We are acknowledging that the Lord is king, that he rules and reigns among us. And what does that do for us? It gives us confidence in our prayer that we have such a king who ever lives to serve us, to use his authority for our well-being rather than just simply to get what he wants. Rejoice in this. The kingdom shall be, is now, and always will be the Lord's. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise that you rule and reign among us through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. So give us joy in his faithful rule as the one who serves us with all that we need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.